Good evening from crafting legislation to being cuffed and charged for corruption. Tonight, team coverage as former Tennessee Speaker of the House Glenn Cassida faces years in federal prison. Cassida and his former chief of staff, Cade Cothran, walked out of the federal courthouse in Nashville today, each facing a long list of federal charges and potentially years in federal prison. Of course, this follows years of investigating, including from our own Phil Williams. And Phil, you were in the courtroom. What did you see? Well, what, what I saw today were two once proud men who had been allowed to throw on clothes quickly when the FBI came to their doors earlier this morning. Former Speaker Cassida seemed to sag in his chair, showing the weight of the moment as the federal magistrate read off a long list of charges, conspiracy, fraud, and money laundering. Without objection. So ordered. Next order. Just a little more than three years ago, Glenn Cassida was in the seat of power, the third most powerful person in state government. Hey, Mr. Speaker, can, can we talk to you about? I'm late for a meeting. A texting scandal involving Cassida and his chief of staff, Kate Catherine, would upend all of that. Speaker, what did you tell the caucus? Quickly forcing the Franklin Republican to give up his position as speaker. But here on this day in the federal courthouse, they would fall even further. Yanked from their homes at 7 a.m., brought into court in handcuffs and leg chains as a U.S. magistrate announced the name of the 20-count indictment, the United States of America versus Glenn Cassida and Kate Cothran. Do you have any regrets, Glenn? Released from custody, Cassida had none of the bravado that once marked his leadership style. Instead, he was a humbled and subdued man now facing up to 20 years in federal prison. Cothran was equally subdued. Both men pleaded not guilty. Mr. Cothran pleaded not guilty to all of the charges in the indictment. He plans on strongly defending the charges. We've got to let this matter proceed through the judicial process. And Mr. Cothran looks very forward to being vindicated. The FBI has been investigating for at least a year and a half at one point, raiding legislative offices, even the former speaker's home. Cassida was still in his bathrobe when agents came knocking. At the center of the charges, allegations that after Cassida's downfall as speaker, Catherine used a fake name to set up Phoenix Solutions, a company that did political mailings. Prosecutors say Cassida and former Representative Robin Smith steered state business to the company in exchange for kickbacks. Smith has already pleaded guilty to federal charges and is cooperating with the FBI. The question is, are authorities interested in more? Has he been pressured to flip on anyone else? I can't make any more statements at this time. As you know, we're just getting started. All right, thank you. But what we do know is authorities have been asking questions about how Cassida managed to pass Governor Lee's school voucher plan by just one vote. Did you bribe anyone for votes for the essay vote? Oh, that's ridiculous. Still, as News Channel 5 investigates first revealed, one lawmaker has alleged that Cassida suggested he could be promoted to general in the National Guard in exchange for his vote. So are these indictments of Cassida and Catherine the end of the road or just another step in the journey? Hey, anything you want to say? Truth will come out, Bill. What that truth will be, only time will tell. Now, Representative Cassidy's attorney, Ed, Yar Ed Yarborough, did not want to speak on camera, but inside the courthouse, he told me that part of his defense may be to question whether the fact that Tennessee government in general receives federal money is enough to justify federal charges for allegedly misusing what he will argue was state money, essentially arguing that the federal government has no business in this case. We're going to be watching that. Absolutely. Right. Thanks so much, Phil.